The Rheingold from the Ring of the Knee belong by Richard Wagner. The synopsis is presented by Opera Inside, the online opera guide. The roles. Welgunde, Flossilde and Woglande, Mermaids and Rhine Maidens, Guardians of the Rheingold. Votan, God and Ruler of the World. Fricka, Goddess of Marriage and Wife of Votan. Friar, Sister of Fricka, Goddess and Guardian of the Apples of Eternal Youth. Donna and Fro, Gods and Brothers of Fricka. Erda, Cirrus, Mother of the Norns. Logi, Demigod and Advisor of Votan. Fasolt and Fafna, Giants. Alberic, Nibelung. Mimi, Nibelung and Brother of Alberic. At the bottom of the Rhine. The Rhine Maidens guard the Rhine Gold. It is located in the middle of a reef in the river. The dwarf Alberic from the people of the Nibelungs appears. Fascinated, he watches the mermaids, and lustfully tries to conquer at least one of them. The three mermaids look at him curiously, and soon they tease the clumsy dwarf. Alberic discovers a bright light by which he is magically attracted. Credulously, the Rhine daughters tell him that there the Rhine gold gleams in the rays of the rising sun. Whoever forges it into a ring reaches the power over the world, but only if he renounces love. Alberic does not hesitate. Embittered by not having been granted love from the mermaids, he curses love, and steals the gold under the horrified gaze of the guards. A mountainous landscape. At the castle of the gods, Fricka wakes up her husband Votan. He is still overwhelmed that his castle Valhalla is completed. Still shrouded in fog, it proudly stands on a mountain, built by the giants Fafner and Fasolt. But Votan is in trouble. He has promised the two giants the goddess Freya as a reward. Frick admonishes him not to give away her sister Freya, for only she can assure the gods of their eternal youth. Votan reminds his wife that it was she, who had asked him for the castle, for she wanted to bind the notorious cheater Votan to herself. Freya appears accompanied by her brothers Donna and Fro. She is panic fueled because she has heard of Votan's dealings. Now Votan must promise not to give Fry away, the two giants appear. They refer to the castle they have built and want to claim their well-deserved reward from Votan. But he tells them that Fry is not available. Fafner and Fasolt accuse him of cheating them out of their wages. They want no other reward. Now appears Logi, the cunning demigod of fire. Votan had summoned him in the hope that he could devise a ruse that would free him from the jam. If he cannot serve the contract, it would cost Votan his power. Fricka warns Votan of the crafty Logi, but Votan trusts his cunning. To Votan's dismay, Logi explains that he had searched everywhere, but he couldn't find a replacement for Friar. In the searching process, he had come across the Rhine Maidens, who complained that Alberic had stolen their gold and were now seeking help from Votan. When Logi tells about the magic of the forged ring, and Votan proposes to snatch it from Alberic to protect them from his claim to power, everyone wants the ring for themselves. Fafner and Fasolt, seized by greed, grab Freya and take her as a pawn. They announce that she will only be released when Votan hands them the ring. Logi mocks the gods who are paralyzed by the fear of losing their eternal youth as they can no longer eat apples from Friar's trees, which Logi himself was never allowed to enjoy. Aging already seizes the gods, and Votan must set off together with Logi to Alberic's underworld, to wrest the ring from him. In Nibelheim, Alberic's kingdom deep underground. In drudgery his brother Mimi has to forge a magic helmet for Alberic, which makes the wearer invisible and gives him power over the people of the Nibelungs. Logi and Votan meet the exhausted Mimi and learn from him about the magic power of the helmet that Mimi had to forge for Alberic. With the power of the ring, Alberic had subdued the industrious people of the Nibelungs. Alberic appears. Proud of the gold, he points out that the Nibelungs pile it up for him day after day with hard work. He knows that Votan and the gods despise him, and he announces that he will use his power to bring the world under his control. No one can defeat him or steal the ring from him, because with the magic helmet he can disappear or transform himself. Flatteringly Logi asks to show him how he can transform. Proudly Alberic turns into a dragon. 
Now Logie cunningly asks him whether he also succeeds in transforming himself into something small. Alberic turns into a toad. Votan grabs it and Alberic is outsmarted. Logie and Votan take Alberic to a mountain and Votan demands that Alberic hand over the gold. His plan is to exchange the gold for Freya and keep the magic helmet and ring for himself. When he snatches the ring from Alberic, all power is taken from the Nibelung. The dwarf curses the ring Frickle to bring bad the luck to his and gods, Fafner and Fasol to the mountain. Votan proudly shows them the captured treasure. Fasolt insists that the gold be piled high enough to hide Friar from view, and they insist that Votan gives them the helmet and the ring. But Votan refuses. There appears a mysterious, veiled woman wrapped in blue light. She urges Votan to let go of the ring, because the curse of Alberic is on him. She reveals herself as Erda, the omniscient mother of the world. The gods urge Votan to follow her advice. Votan knows about the wisdom of Erda and agrees. He gives the ring to Fasolt and Friar is set free. Without knowing it, Votan has been infected by the poison of the curse by touching the ring. Fafner and Fasolt quarrel when sharing the prey. Fafner violently kills his brother with an axe. The curse has claimed its first victim. Donna creates a purifying thunderstorm. The fog clears and they see the castle for the first time. Fro lets a rainbow emerge which serves them as a path to the castle. Seized by a great thought, Votan raises his spear against the castle. He will not return the ring, but a hero free of treaties. Seized, Votan approaches the castle, he takes Fricka by the hand and christens their new home Valhalla. Logi went out empty handed. He has only mockery and derision for the gods whose rule is based only on robbery and violence. From afar one hears the lamentations of the Rhine Maidens over the lost gold. The gods mock them and enter solemnly and fatuously their new home. www.operainside.com All about operas. Learn more about this great opera. With interesting facts and great YouTube videos. Visit us.